But Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you so much for the privilege it is that we can gather. We know that there are countries right now around the world that are still in lockdown. And um, we, we pray for them. We just pray for wisdom. We pray for, for those countries to be able to make it through this season as quick and as safe as possible, Lord God. We pray for our own nation. Lord, I pray that even as some numbers are rising, Lord God, I just pray that we will be able to navigate this the way that we're doing it right now, Lord God. But right now, we just pray for today, this morning, this message, Lord God, this moment in time. I just pray for every single person that's here today. I pray, may you speak through me like I believe you've spoken to me. I pray that every person that's in church today, that when we leave, that we will leave more in love with you than when we came in. May we have our eyes open for what you are able to do in and through our lives. We thank you in your wonderful name, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I don't know about you if you watch television in your household. I know some of you, you don't watch television, you just read and read the Bible and study and you are awesome people. Uh, in our household, that is our downtime. It's Netflix and it's old movies. Anyone with me on that? Few people. The rest of you, you're lying in church. Good start. But, you know, in, on television, they often do this thing where they show, um, suddenly they will show some old movie. And, and I'm enjoying doing this service in the morning service because I know that the average age is a little bit older than the evening service. So I'm sure that I'm going to have some friends with me in this service. Uh, because some of the movies that sometimes come up on a regular basis are movies like The Rocky. You know, Rocky, the boxing you know, it's, it's not even a trilogy, it's a whole series. Is anyone into that movie, that whole series? You know, and it, it gets me every time, and, I, got, and, I, and I, I know what's about to happen, but I'm a sucker for movies, I'm a sucker for stories. I'll sit and watch My Little Pony with my girls and tell them to be quiet uh, because we need to watch what happens. And they're like, Daddy, we know what happens. Like, it doesn't matter, I need to see it, I need to experience it, I need to feel it. We need to go through this together. We started out together, we're gonna finish together. That's me, okay? And so if, if there's just a little bit of, of Rocky on or whatever, I'm like, man, we need to see what happens. We know what's going to happen, but we need to see it. We need to experience it. And, you know, inevitably in the movie, there will be a moment where, you know, Sly, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky, he is down and out. He's in the corner. He's bleeding. He can't see anything. You know, his wife is somewhere. His memories are haunting him. It's a painful time. And at some point, the coach, the trainer, his friend, someone will grab his attention and will convince him that he will win because he wants it more than the other guy. And against all odds, even though he has been pounded for 15 rounds, even though that the, the hits he has taken would kill the ordinary man, he will get up again and he will win the day and he will win the moment and every time there is goosebumps i'm sitting there i'm like babe are you watching she's asleep she doesn't care she doesn't appreciate the art that we're watching but i want to speak a message today that i've called what do you want what do you want and yes i could be quoting the notebook because there is a great scene in the notebook as well what do you want uh, i wrote to you every day for a year no? Okay. <laughs> Just want to see where we are. So we're more on the rocky side, okay? Not the rom-com? Okay, great. You see, when Jesus, he got to the age and the time in his life where he was going to step into his ministry, he was going to step from being really anonymous carpenter and step into his calling and his true identity as the son of God, introducing the new kingdom, we, we get an insight of of really the heart of this kingdom of heaven. As he was about to deliver his first major sermon, his first major speech, almost you would say his manifesto of what is this kingdom of heaven like? You would be expected that there would be, you know, an insight into what is the motives, the culture, the focus of this kingdom. And we see and hear about it in Matthew chapter six, verse one. And it says, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. 
You see, as he starts out and he's sitting and thinking about what he's going to speak and say to the thousands of people that are gathered, you would be forgiven to, if you thought that the speech you was going to give would be like a brave heart inspired. Brave heart? Is that okay? Okay, it is that. Okay, you're like a violent bunch. It's okay. You would be forgiven to think that he was going to give like this brave heart kind of a speech, appealing to the strength in us. Appealing to, the, appealing to this, this desire in us, appealing to all the potential in us. Yet when Jesus got up and he spoke, he said, blessed are the poor, blessed are the thirsty, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the hungry. There is an entrepreneur that I follow on social media that he's like a coach kind of vibe, and, and he, he used to do this series called uh, Overrated or Underrated. And so people would just give him topics of different things that are happening in, in the business world or in the, in the communications or promotion world. And then he would just go, is it overrated or underrated? And I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about this whole kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is an upside down kingdom. It is where we serve in order to get greatness. It is where we go lower ourselves and God, he raises us, raises us up. It's where we are servant leaders and we're not ruling leaders. The, the upside down kingdom, it is it's a different way of looking at life. And I think one of the things that is so underrated in life today, one of the things that is so underrated out of these values that Jesus is pointing out, it is hunger and thirst. What do you want? What are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? Like in the old Rocky movies, where they're trying to get his attention just for a moment, in the midst of the pain and all these obstacles, grab their attention and say, come on, you can do this. I guess my dream today is just to grab your attention long enough, no matter what the circumstances are in your life right now, just grab your attention long enough just to say if you, you will win if you want it bad enough that if you can just grab your attention, hold your focus on what you want, not being distracted by what is going on around you, but actually holding on to what you want. We live in a day and age where some psychologists say that now the human's attention span is less than that of a goldfish. Do you know how much pressure you feel as a public speaker hearing those stats? It's like every three seconds you need to be stimulated. Come on, guys. Help me out, you know? Every few seconds, we need a stimuli. Like every few seconds, we need to, hey, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> Focus, throw in overcoming pain and obstacles. Throw in a world of trouble. Throw in that we feel entitled to success. A few months ago, I would like to say a few days ago, I turned 40. I know, you can't see it. And... Um, and one of the presents that I got was a diving certificate. Well, I got the chance to get my diving certificate, that you don't just get a certificate. Here you go, a license. Um, no, so so I, I had to go and do a course. I did it together with Josias Rugo, our kids pastor. And, um, and we, were, we were in this class, and it was just the two of us. Now, we ha may have forgotten that um, when we booked it that we were playing a major football tournament that night. And that's why it was just the two of us. But be that what it may. But then there was one other kid that was doing it as well, this teenager. And he came in. Now, just for those of you that haven't done a diving certificate before, let me just explain to you, it's not rocket science. It's very simple. It's very easy. And if, you know, you have to do this theory test and you've got to learn this different stuff, but, but part of it is that if you can't, if you don't know the answer, it's kind of like, no, what else could it be, Thomas? You know, could it be one of the other boxes to tick? You know, it's not that hard. But anyways, while we are doing it, 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 it became obvious that our friend, the third guy, the teenager, if you're here today, I'm sorry, but um, that he had not opened a book once. Not once, not a single page. I don't think he knew where the book was. And, and so, you know, the questions came through, and it's like, you know, why do we do this? And you say one thing, and the teacher's like, no, that doesn't even, that's not even a logical answer. Could it be one of the others? And, you know, going through to finally the last book, yay! And we're like, yeah, good on you. And, you know, eventually, 
the thing happened that we all expected was that he didn't, he didn't pass the course. And I was surprised. Not that he didn't pass the course. I wasn't surprised by that. I was surprised that he was, he was crying. He was weeping um, for not passing the course. And I felt a little bit bad, um, like a little bit, you know, empathy for him. But then again, in the back of my head, I'm like, why are you crying? Like, not because I don't, you know, I don't, because I don't cry. I sweat. Um, and so it wasn't that, but it was more just like, you haven't studied. Like, why, why, like why, what are you upset about? Like, of course this was going to happen. But I think that moment became a picture, <laughs> really, a picture of what is happening in the world today. So often there is a culture of entitlement, that of course I deserve everything, of course I deserve success, of course everything I do should prosper. But not only that, you also need to keep me motivated. I won't motivate myself. You actually, if you're my boss, not only do you have to pay me whether I work or not, or whether I'm good at the job or not, you also have to motivate me. And it's like, it's this world that we live in where we're not even taking responsibility for our own passions anymore. And I wanna just encourage us today to stir up some of that passion, to stir up some of that hunger again, to stir up some of that desire again for what you want in life. That's why I've often said that we have to be passionate about our passion. It's not just what are you passionate about. Are you passionate about the actual passion? It is good to be passionate about different things. You can be passionate about church. You can be passionate about your spouse. You can be passionate about your hobby. You can be passionate about football. You can be passionate about your job. You can be passionate about whatever cause that you're part of. But really, passion is so Fragile. Passion is like the cord that is connecting the two things that you're passionate about. On one side, you have limitless power. Limitless power. You have who you are as a person. On the other side, you have limitless potential. That if you could just connect what you are able to do, your ability with your potential, your resources with a cause, your energy with a job, your creativity with an idea. I mean, those two on their own is amazing. But they're, they're the connection between the two, it is so fragile. And I think all of us can agree that we need to develop our potential. We need to develop who we are, yes. Oh, and we need to find the right thing to be part of, the right thing to connect to. Yes, but we talk very little about the two that connect, the two things that are actually connecting your power with your potential. Because this connection is so fragile. It's plugged into this limited power that all of us have, that we're connected into the things of God. And we have so much potential in our lives. We sit in church. We have a moment to connect into limitless worship. We have the potential of having a life-altering moment. And what happens? Some perfume just walks past. And we're like, oh, who's that? What is that? You know, and suddenly connection is lost. Even though we have the potential of amazing worship, even though we have the potential of a moment in time of connecting with God, perfume. Someone forgot the the lyrics on stage. And we start thinking about that instead. The connection has been broken. It could be, you know, someone's preaching an unbelievable sermon. And we have a moment to receive a truth from the word of God that can set us free. But then... My phone's beeping. Uh, someone's walking around. Someone's talking. So, so I'm hungry. Uh, I, what's, what's the score? You know, just small things that are breaking the connection. It could be your time of prayer. It could be your moment of having in that moment of prayer and suddenly there is a notification on your phone. What about your dream? The connection to your dream. What about the connection to your significant other? What about your connection to your family? Success often doesn't come to the most gifted. Success most often comes to the one who doesn't give up. The one who is able to keep 
the connection. Albert Einstein, he, he said, genius is 1% inspiration, but 99% perspiration. Having the ability not to give up, had the ability to hustle and grind, having the, abys- having the ability to hold on and to hang on to whatever it is that you feel that God is calling you to do, to be like a bulldog, to grab hold of it and do not let go. And I wanna encourage you today, do not get, let go of your dream. Do not let go of your relationship. Do not let go of your family. Do not let go of that cause. Do not let go of your church. Do not let go of your healing. Do not let go of that friend that you're believing to come to church. Do not let go of your conviction. Do not let go of your faith. Hang on to it. It's amazing how quickly something comes in and starts to tamper with this. But we don't, we're not passionate about this. We are passionate about what it's connected to. We are passionate about what it's, what it's, you know, my life and me being connected to this great thing over here. So the moment something is altering with this, we kind of like, oh, it's okay. It's just a friend. It's okay. It's just a blog that I'm ascribing to. It's okay. It's just someone that I'm listening to. It's okay. But those voices, those doubts, those thoughts you're entertaining, it's okay, maybe you should have a different wife. Maybe you should go for a different job. Maybe that church is not so good. Maybe, you know, this whole God thing is a bit too much and slowly the connection is broken. It's nothing about the potential. It's nothing about you. You are still called and, and amazed and, and, and an incredible human being and God is still God. But the connection is so fragile. I wanna encourage you today, even if today you find yourself disconnected from whatever it is that you feel connected to, what you felt connected to, be it church, be it faith, be it a dream, be it a cause, whatever it is that you were connected, be it another human being. The Bible says we may stumble seven times, but we will get up again. And I wanna encourage you, even if there's been a disconnect, can I encourage you to reconnect? Can I encourage you that even if there's a disconnect in your faith, even if there's a disconnect in your relationship, even if there's a disconnect in church, even if there's a disconnect in your life, it's time to get reconnected. It's time to get reconnected to whatever it is that you felt called in the beginning. Be passionate about your passion. Some of us, we just need to turn off the do not disturb function on our phone when it comes to church. Some of us need to put the do not disturb sign on our bedroom door when it's time to pray. Some of us just need to ask our friends to our left and our right, could we just not talk to one another for the next 30 minutes? I just need the Word of God right now. This is my one moment in the week where I get my input. This is the one moment in the week where I check the flags in the sand. This is my one moment, and I don't want to miss a moment that God has for me. Blessed are the hungry. Blessed are the thirsty. What do you want? And do you want it the most? The poor in the spirit, they're those who recognize they are in need of God. They are in need of God's help. This is the kingdom of heaven. It's those that are okay with saying, man, I can't do this in my own strength. I can't do this in my, I'm spiritual bankrupt without Jesus. This is not built on gifts and talents. This is built on the grace of God. I need God's help to be a good dad. I need God's help to be a good husband. I need God's help to be a good friend. I need God's help to be a Christian. I need God's help to be a a human. I need God's help to be a pastor. I cannot do any of it in my own strength. And the moment you get to the end of yourself and you realize and you say, God, I'm poor. I am hungry, I am thirsty, I am bankrupt without you. That is when God's grace steps in. Whether it's the woman in the crowd that pushed through all the religious people, whether the woman in the crowd that pushed through all the spiritual elite and just needed just to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, saying, I need my healing, or the woman that humbled herself in front of the who's who of the spiritual elite and washed the feet of Jesus. Or whether it's Peter who just humbled himself and said, sir, you know my heart. You know my heart. I've already denied you three times. You know who I am. That humility of admitting I cannot do it in my own strength. Or whether it's the Roman centurion who said to Jesus, please do not even come to my house. I'm not worthy of you entering my home. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. I wonder what you want today. There are people 
They might say, you know, I could do this in my own strength. I have to say I'm not one of them. I need him just to breathe. I need him just to get up in the morning. And whenever I take over my life, I mess it up. I don't know about you, but that's how we got into this mess, was me trying to take over. If I get the team to come and join us, that'd be great. You know what, if I have to be honest, sometimes I'm not there where I want it bad enough. When I search my heart, I know I want to be there. And maybe we can just be honest here this morning, but you know when you see people around you and they're super passionate about something? And you, you look at yourself and you look at them and you go, man, they, they are awesome. Whether they're passionate about health or fitness or whether they're passionate about finances or whether they're passionate about church or the things of God. You know, you look at them and you're like, man, that's cool. But you also look at yourself and realize, I don't even want to be there yet. Where I am, I'm one step further back where I want to, want to. And I think there's people here today, you're not, you look around and we're saying to you, we're like, don't you want this? And you're kind of like, no, I don't. <laughs> but I want to want to. I, I want to be, want to have passion. I want to be passionate about my passion again. And you're kind of just one more step removed. I want to want to read the word. I want to want to come to church. I want to want to pray. I know whenever it comes time for me to you know, go through a detox or look at my diet, I'm like, God, just help me want to want to do this because <laughs> I don't want to do it, but I want to want to. And it's the same with the things that matter that really, in, the things in life that really matter. I want to want to. King David, he said in Psalm 51 verse 10, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. You know what, that's so, what's so amazing about Jesus. If you don't know Christianity the way we're talking about it, you know, Christianity is not a religion where you have to work at it with all your strength in terms of your striving to get better. Christianity really is getting to the point where you admit, I cannot do this. When Jesus came to earth, he set the bar so high. <laughs> he came, he said, hey, you've heard you're not allowed to murder. I say you're not even allowed to be angry. You've heard it said you're not allowed to sleep around. I say you can't even lust. You've heard it say you're not allowed to kill. I say you cannot even hate. He was saying, you thought it was hard before? It's not hard, it's this hard. And people looked at it and said, man, but that's impossible. Exactly, it's impossible. We cannot do this in our own strength. So it's not a matter of striving. It's not a matter of me getting up in the morning and saying, oh, I really want to, want to. It's what I call constipated Christianity. Jesus, I want to, want to. No, we cannot do this in our own strength. It's the grace of God. See, grace means God helping me. It's, saying, it's just making space for God's grace, saying, hey, Jesus, I don't really want to read my Bible today. On the way to church, Jesus, I don't really want to go to church today. Jesus, I don't really want to be married today. Jesus, I don't really want to be a Christian today. Jesus, I have some options right now that I would rather want to do, but I, and I don't really want to do the right thing here. See, God doesn't go, oh, no, never. No. But then we just say, hey, God, could you help me? Because I really want to, want to. I would love to get to the point, Jesus, where I want to want to go to church again. I want to get to the point where I want to want to be married and I want to want to be a parent. I want to want to read my Bible and I really want to get to that point. Jesus, could you, I guess we're praying what David prayed, could you renew my heart? Could you restore unto me the joy of my salvation? Could you restore unto me the joy of my marriage? Could you restore unto me the joy of my job? Could you restore unto me this joy that I once had? I want to, want to. There's some people here today, you want Jesus. And you want to, and I wanna encourage you today to figure out how are you gonna protect your passion? How are you gonna protect the connection? I mean, we talk about this in a million different pictures. We call them boundary stone. We call them flags in the sand. There's a message online right now, the latest message out of Hillsong on our YouTube. Um, about you know nailing the colors to 
the mast, nail your flag to the mast, and it's about that as well. So, you know, creating boundary stones in your life. But the biggest question is just, how are you gonna protect it? How are you gonna protect the connection? And I think one of the big question is, what is draining your passion? If you don't know what's attacking it, let me just ask you, what's draining it? What's draining your passion for church? What's draining your passion for your marriage? What's draining your passion for your job? What's draining it? What, what, what's taking away that passion? You know, you, and, and then make a decision. I'm either gonna limit it or remove it. It could be like what's draining you is friends constantly saying stuff to you, just feeding you a whole bunch of rubbish. I, I'm not saying delete them out of your life, cancel them, I'm not saying that. You, you need to be the judge of that. But you can limit them. You can't limit what role and what weight you assign to their words. But can I just remind you today, people who don't share your purpose will never understand your passion. People who don't share your purpose will never understand your passion. Business people, you putting God first, you trust in God. Don't expect people that don't share your purpose to understand that passion kids that have parents or grandparents or friends in school they don't understand why do you go to church every week twice a week and a connect group and you know we can almost be blue in the face trying to convince them and and and, and you know talk them into it and make them understand listen if they don't share your purpose they will not understand your passion I mean we got Jesper down here he is currently training, he's been training the last 10 years to do an Ironman. And at some point in 2030, he's gonna do this Ironman. But you know, every single night, he's posting a video of him training, of him training, running, cycling, swimming, running, cycling, swimming. Oh, oh, oh. And listen, if you don't share that purpose, you're never gonna understand the passion. You're gonna be like, come on. Like, what? Like, go to bed, you know, like, it's too much. You know, they, you're pressing yourself too much. You're pushing yourself. And you know, all those that are well-meaning. It's well-meaning, but we just don't share the same purpose. Because in 2041, when he finally does his Iron Man, he's going to be able to do it. I won't. Because we didn't, we didn't sign up for that same purpose. Some people, they would have said to me, well-meaning, Thomas, you do too much, too much church stuff, too much, it's too busy, you need to just calm down. I get it from your point of view, I get that. Because we don't share the same purpose. I might say the same to you about your job. I might say the same to you about your hobby. So you know all the butterflies in the world, well done. I would be like, cool, you know. Like we just, we're not on the same page here. And so instead of trying to convince people of your purpose, that's why we say, why don't you just come and see for yourself? Come and see for yourself and just pray for them and just pray for them. And let's believe God that they will find that as well. I think these days there's an attack on two significant God and state of relationships or connection points, if you will. One, it's your relationship to the local church. I think there's such, a, I think it's a spiritual attack I think it's an attack that comes across media, that comes across culture. There's an attack on the connection to the local church. And anything attacking local churches, whether it's suspicion or criticism or whatever, it gets so much airtime, so much. I was so happy today. We had TV Talk, Laurie, you know, Global Channel here this morning, just, you know, filming because we were, we were opening up church. And uh, what's funny is that I've never said the address of this place because Felix Bath Center, everyone knows it. So they asked for the address and I forgot our address. So I gave him another stream. And, but it's like my, you know, I said, Suomi's via. That's not here. That's the Apostolic Church in Felix Bath as well. So they drove down there and they go, hey, we're here now. I said, no, you're not. I was like, yeah, we're on Suomi's via. It's like, oh, that's not us. We're on Sulo's place. <laughs> But that's a good church too. That's my friend. You can, you can interview him as well if you want. And so they came over here. But, but you know, it is, so, it is so rare that church gets a good story. And I, and I, and I, you know, I don't want to say there's a demon behind everything, but I do want to say there's an attack on your local church, on the connection. What would you do to protect that in your life? 
And I think the other God instated relationship connection point that is under attack is marriage and families. Marriage and families, constantly. The pressure, the marriage and families. Get a new one, move on. It's done, it's over. You know, just marriage and family, significant relationships. I wanna encourage you, set something in place that is protection, that is protecting the connection. And then there's those of us in here today that we're not there yet, but we want to, want to. Let me just finish with this verse, 2 Timothy 1.6. For this reason, Paul says to his young disciple Timothy, he says, I remind you to feign into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us, he does not, it does not make us fearful, timid, but it gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Another version says a sound mind. You see, this, your relationship with, with God, it must go beyond goosebumps. It must go beyond, it was a great song. It must go beyond, it's a good preacher. It has to go beyond that. When people say like, oh, you know, I walked away, I'm not really a Christian. Yeah, because my church didn't have good worship. It's not their fault. At some point, we've got to take personal responsibility. And Paul says to Timothy, you, you, fan into flame. You stir up the gift. Because at 6 a.m., at 7 a.m., there won't be a band. Jonathan's not going to be there. Alex is not going to be there. It would be awkward if you woke up and Alex is just standing there plunking away. It'd be awkward if I, you, the moment you open the Bible, suddenly I pop up. Well, let me tell you what that means. <laughs> That'd be awkward. You tell me to get out of your house. We've got to fan it up in our own lives for ourselves. Stir up in our own lives for ourselves. There must be a desire that I want to rekindle. I want to re-stir the things. And you might once have had flames. You might once have had this, you know, flaming fire burning in your life with passion for your relationship, for your church, for your relationship with God. And now all you have left is a few embers. It's such a good word. We don't don't say it enough. Just a few embers. I want to encourage you, do what you need to do to get those embers burning again. It might be allowing the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow on it, just to create space for the wind of God to blow on it. It might mean to remove some things that are choking it. You know, when you're building a fire, sometimes there's just too much. When you're building fire with your kids, they're like, here's a log, Dad. Here's something wet, Dad. You know, and it's like, no, 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 just just a little bit at a time. Just a little bit of word, a little bit of prayer, a little bit of church, a little bit of input, just a little bit, just not too much, just a little bit. Just remove a little bit of the distractions. Or it might mean that it needs to be fed a bit more. Maybe it is ready to burn, but you just need to add the Word of God. You you need to add some fellowship. I don't know what it is in your life, but I wanna encourage you just to take a stock take today. Look at your life. Look at your significant connections in your life, your relationships, your your cause, your, your job, whatever it is that you are giving majority of your time to, your local church, your relationship with God. What is the connection like right now? Is it, is it in tight? Is it in tight with maybe one of those, you know, waterproof casing around so even if the storms come, it's not going anywhere? Is it in tight with thing that even if you pulled, it wouldn't be able to get unlocked? Or is it kinda, is it kinda shaky? Is it kinda loose? And all we need is just the slightest little bump and it drops. I don't know where you're at today, but I definitely wanna pray for you. And I wanna pray for wisdom, that we will have a sound mind and self-discipline. Just to look ourselves in the mirror and just be honest. It's not about condemnation, it's not about judgment. It's just about being honest and saying, this connection needs some work. And we're just gonna give God space to do that. The first connection I wanna pray, the first group of people I wanna pray for, it's just you're here today and there's no connection with Jesus, none. And today you just wanna open your life up just for your life to be connected to the unlimited, limitless God. There's a God in heaven who has a plan and a purpose for your life. There's a God in heaven who loves you, who cares for you. It's not just the little children that He has assigned purpose to, it's you. 
And I don't believe you're here by coincidence. I believe you're here for a reason. And I want to pray for anyone here today, whether you're here, you're in Olbo, you're in the parents' lounge, wherever you might be under the sound of my voice, online. I want to pray for anyone here today that you're saying, Thomas, I want to connect my life with Jesus. I don't exactly know how, I don't exactly know the details of this, but I recognize there is something here. And I want to just connect my life to God through Jesus. So could I get everyone just to close your eyes, just to give everyone just a moment of privacy. And I'm just going to quickly count to three. And when I get to three, I want every person who wants to say yes to Jesus. Every person who wants to come back to Jesus. For whatever reason, you might have walked away and you realize today that your connection is broken. And today you want to come back to Jesus. I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, if that is you, I want you just to lift your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it so I know who I'm praying for. You ready? One, two, three. Just lift your hand all over this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone else here today, you're saying, I want to say yes to Jesus. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm, just, I'm not going to point you out. I just want to pray for you. I just want to know who I'm praying for. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Amazing. Anyone else here today? You're saying, Thomas, pray for me. I, I, I want to say yes to Jesus. I've been lost. I've been gone. I've been away. Well, I've never heard anyone talk about Jesus like this. I want this. Thank you. Anyone else here today? It's fantastic. Thank you. You can put your hands down. We're going to say a prayer together. And uh, you might say, how loud do I need to pray? Just loud enough that the person next to you can hear it. Why is that? Well, because we're family. And I just want everyone to know that we're in this together, that no one fights alone, that we are in this together. So come on, just close our eyes one more time. I'm going to say a prayer just line for line. And I want to ask everyone just to repeat it as we just connect or reconnect our lives with Jesus. So just pray after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my mistakes and my sin. But today, I choose you. I make you my Lord and Savior. And from today, I'm a follower of Jesus. I am forgiven and I am free. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Come on, can we congratulate? Come on, can we celebrate every single person? So good. Just before, but just before, uh, because we have a gift for you guys that, that prayed that prayer. I want to pray for one more group. And that's those of you that you are in the category of, I want to want to. It's not that I want to, and I've just been a little bit distracted, but I get it. Thanks, Thomas, for reminding me. I'm back. No, you, you, you're here where you're like, man, I want to want to. I want to want to. I want to want to pray. I want to want to go to church. I want to want to be married. I want to want to, whatever it is. And just there's been an attack on these things in your life. And today, it's just, it's a humble, humbling moment. And it's, it's, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. That's what it is. Because you're recognizing, wait a minute, there is so much ahead of me. And I have so much to give, but this connection here is so vital. And I want to want to make sure that's strong. So come on, can we just close our eyes one more time? If that's you and you're saying, that's me, like just renew my heart, renew, restore the joy of my salvation. If that is you, could you just lift your hand all over this place? Hands everywhere. You're not alone, just so you know. Anyone else? That's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it might be in certain areas, some area, one area, all areas. You know. And so Jesus, I just thank you for every person just honest and humble enough, Lord God, just to admit their need, to say, Lord, I'm, I'm poor. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm bankrupt without you. Lord, I pray right now just to stir up, stir up, Lord God, the flames again. Restore unto them the joy of their salvation. Renew their hearts, Lord God. I pray that you, they will rediscover, rediscover the joy of their faith, rediscover the joy of that conviction, rediscover the joy of whatever it is, the purpose they were attached to, rediscover the joy of that relationship, Lord God. May you restore our hearts, Lord God, as we make space for your grace. 
in our personal walks with you, Lord God. May you let the Word of God come alive again. May you let may the Spirit of God reignite again, Lord God. May you, may you restore unto us the joy of salvation. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. To all of you that lifted your hand, can I just say to you, do what you need to do. Yeah? Like, just have a tough conversation with yourself and if you're married, with your spouse, of just like, what do I need to do to change some of these things? What do I need to put in place to make sure that connection is strong? Is that okay? Amazing. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Hey, if you lifted your hand before saying yes to Jesus, we want to give you a gift. It's a New Testament Bible and um, just in a magazine format, really easy to approach and read. We have it in English, Danish, Swedish. Uh, version. So on the way out, some of my amazing team have these Bible pickup signs. They are here in the building, out in the foyer, in the parents' lounge, in Olbor. Online, we're not at home, but you can email us and we'll send one to you. You don't walk out in the foyer and you're like, oh, there's someone in my house with a Bible. <laughs> That's a joke. Sorry. I know it's getting late. You're hungry. But um, if you walk over to them and just say, hey, I prayed that prayer. I'd love one of those free Bibles. It's a gift. You're not a burden. You're not disturbing us. We'd love to give it to you. So on the way out, just walk past. Or if you, if you brought a friend and they lifted your hand, we know you're watching. We all do. You know, just grab the Bible for them, okay? And just say, hey, I'd like to take a Bible for my friend. Write today's date in it. And then every day, just make a decision. I'm going to read a little bit. And you watch the flames starting burning again. And then the second thing I want to encourage you to do is just keep coming back. Just keep finding yourself in a place that are encouraging you, that is, you know, that's pushing you forward, that's reminding you of who you could be rather than who you were. Amen? And so we normally just say, why don't you just take the next four Sundays? Make a decision. Next four Sundays, I'm going to be in church and set a new trajectory in your life. And you watch if in four Sundays' time, there's not already a change that is taking place as your, the joy of your salvation is being restored. Amen? Amen. Come on. Can we give all those people one more hand? You guys are fantastic. You're heroes.